If you're on a road with a lower speed limit, a new law means you may have to share your lane with a motorcycle. Kega 9 on your sides. Danelle Confair joins us live from the east side with more. Danelle? Pat, Heidi, good evening to you. The new law will go into effect sometime late October. And while it could mean motorcycle drivers will be sharing the lane with you, there's also a set of guidelines they'll have to follow. While traffic is stopped, they'll be splitting lanes at the top speed of 15 miles per hour to go to the front uh, of the lanes. The Arizona legislation for motorcycles was signed into law earlier this month. The new law states a two-wheeled motorcycle can safely pass another vehicle in the same lane that is stopped and going in the same direction. The motorcycle driver must be going less than 15 miles per hour, and the speed limit must be less than 45 miles per hour. Now, the movement can only be done if it's done safely. Motorcyclists need to be aware that uh, the motors aren't going to know what's going on and why they're splitting lanes uh, because most people aren't aware of the law change. Sean and Tina Jaggers, president and vice president of Sun Valley Motorcycle Riders, say even though the new law doesn't go into effect until later this year, they've seen riders split lanes. I've seen people lane split even though it's not legal right now, um, and I think it's really, really dangerous, especially the way they're doing it. While there can be many dangers when riding, they say the new law will be helpful and another way to make sure riders' bikes don't overheat. So if you're out on a 45-mile road and there's a traffic jam, it, you know, it just frees up more possibilities. Now, if you want us to cover something in our Kagan 9 Operation Safe Road segment, let us know. Call the number on your screen or send an email to saferoads at kagan9.com. Live from the east side, Danelle Confair, Kagan 9 on your side. All right, Danelle, thank you. Some churches have been under attack on Tucson's near east side. Kagan 9 on your side's Craig Smith is live at Streams in the Desert Lutheran Church on Pima Street with more. Craig? Well, if you look right here, you can get a feel for the kind of vandalism we're talking about. A statue of Jesus beheaded. Congregation members say there's been vandalism here for about 20 years. Now a man is under arrest for attacks here and at another church nearby. Besides the attack on the statue of Jesus, a vandal smashed a window to the church office. Stained glass windows were smashed in earlier attacks. Nearby on Pima Street, Grace to the Nation's Church was attacked along with a school next door. At Streams in the Desert, it will be a challenge to bring things back to the way they should be. It'll be time consuming and money expense that, you know, a small church, we don't have a lot of funds, but we get by. And uh, we, like I said, we have a sculptor that will be able to recreate the head. So he's been notified and the windows will be repaired by uh, one of our members. Now, Tucson police have charged 41-year-old Shane Almgren with the latest vandalism. There's no indication that he is part of the vandalism that reaches farther back. Church members say he was even a guest at church dinners, but attacked the church member and has not been welcomed since. Now, a quick check of court record shows about 44 charges, including aggressive panhandling and threats and intimidation. Now, Almgren will need to post more than $12,000 bond to get out of jail while his cases go through the courts. Right now, he has seven charges. Charges pending. Reporting live, Craig Smith, Kagon 9 on your side. All right, Craig, thank you. And when temperatures heat up in southern Arizona, it means it's time to start watching out for wildfires. Uh, nine on your side's Megan Meyer joins us live from Catalina State Park, where officials are preparing visitors for the potential dangers there. Megan. Well, Pat, Heidi, you can, as you can see, it's extremely windy out here at Catalina State Park this evening, and you can see behind me, they have the high fire danger sign up, and part of the reason for that is because of dry fuels like these right beside me. Dried up vegetation can cause fires to spread if one were to spark here. Now, the Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Management predicts fire activity will be high this year. The department is teaming up with Arizona State Parks in honor of Wildfire Awareness Week, which starts today. Last year, over 70% of the state's fires were started by people, so educating park goers is extremely important. When you're in a park, you may think that you're in an area that's 
you know, ranger controlled and everything's going to be fine and you're going to do your thing, but you do need to be extra careful. Now, here are some of the things state park officials want visitors to keep in mind this season. Make sure your campfire is fully out before leaving the area. Never light off fireworks, never smoke, and make sure your vehicle is, isn't creating any sparks. Now, following these rules, it's responsibility of everyone who comes to the park here this season and could protect this beautiful area from future devastation. Live from Catalina State Park, Megan Meyer, Kaga Nen on your side. All right, Megan, thank you so much. Let's bring in Kyler and talk weather. Yeah, and you know, Kyler, it's a, it's a really dangerous combination. The dry, dry conditions, even with a little rain moving in, and then you've got this wind today. Yeah, exactly. And remember, all that vegetation came from such a productive monsoon that we had last summer. And now that's just what happens when you don't get a good dose of winter rain. So in combination with the gusty wind and the relative humidity being so low, we do have extremely high wildfire conditions across all of southeastern Arizona. So a red flag warning continues until 8 o'clock tonight. So be really careful out there. Also, think about the blowing dust. We're going to have some blowing dust concerns in a few areas too because we are continuing to see wind speeds anywhere from 25 to 35 miles an hour. Some wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour. And look at the low humidity levels. We've got most of us running anywhere from 5 to 15 percent. We're going to try and introduce some moisture into the lower levels of our atmosphere as we go through the night, and that means a few showers are back in the forecast. We'll tell you all about it. All right, Kyler, thank you. Well, coming up from wildfire safety to a wildfire in southern Pima County. Now, how a State Department is trying to put that fire out and whether or not it was human cause, that's next. You're watching KGA 9 on your side. We tell your stories because you matter to us. You're watching Pat Paris and Heidi Alaga, Kega 9 on your side. A wildfire is continuing to spread near Sassabee. More than 70 people are now working to contain the fire that is nearing 3,000 acres, and you can see where the fire is on this map. The fire started on Sunday afternoon, but officials say that no people are in danger. As of right now, the fire isn't in an area where it can endanger people. Um, the nearest structure is about a quarter mile from the fire. Um, the fire is not moving in that direction, but if it definitely did, we would definitely start following the protocols to start evacuating the people. The Department of Forestry and Fire Management are using two air tankers to help put out the fire. Officials say the fire is human caused and warned that any new fires in the area could really strain their resources and uh, it's an area that's tough to get to so that's why they're using the tankers. Well let's check in now with Kyler. He is tracking our forecast in those winds. Yeah exactly so it's in situations like this where we kind of rely on mother nature to maybe provide a little bit of help. Well we are seeing some moisture increasing across southern Arizona. The only problem is the air at the surface is so dry this moisture is having a problem reaching it all the way down to the surface. We're going to try and change that though in the overnight hours. We'll give you all the details coming up in your forecast as Kagan 9 on your side continues. Now, your first warning weather with Kyler Diggs. Well, even with all the cloud cover we had across southern Arizona today, we still felt some pretty comfortable temperatures. 79 was the high at the airport this afternoon, 56 the low early this morning, pretty close to the averages of 79 and 50. But that is going to change a lot as we go into tomorrow. Temperatures across southern Arizona, most of us 70s and even some lower 80s today. Right now it's 76 degrees in Tucson, 69 in Douglas, 67 in Nogales. Let's take a look at the rest of the current conditions. Taking a look to the west over the Tucson mountains, we do see the clouds increasing 19 degrees on the dew point, 12% humidity. That's why these clouds are struggling to produce any rain. But we'll get a few showers as we go through the evening hours, but more likely as we go into the early morning hours overnight tonight. Temperatures will eventually drop into the 50s. Right now it's 38 degrees in Flagstaff, looking at mid to upper 70s, even stretching into the Colorado River Valley. We're still on the warm side of the storm system. A lot of cloud cover over the western United States. Let's zoom in on this low pressure system that's just now moving into southern California and tapping into some moisture, swinging it up over the southwest. And as we start to saturate the atmosphere a little bit more. We will see some of these showers 
actually making it to the ground. And that'll happen a little bit later tonight and into tomorrow. Precipitation forecast does show scattered showers and even some thunderstorms in the forecast tomorrow, but most of the thunderstorms will be to the north of Tucson, although even in the metro area, I wouldn't be surprised to get a stray thunderstorm or two. This storm moves out quickly and gives way to some pretty nice weather. As far as the rainfall totals go, most of us will not be measuring much in the old rain gauge, less than a half inch for most of us. Temperatures, 40s and 50s for overnight lows tonight, upper 40s, lower 50s around the metro area. And then for tomorrow, high temperatures. Check that out upper 50s and lower 60s. No, that is not a mistake. That is the real deal right there. So really cooling down tomorrow, but then a quick rapid recovery back to spring like conditions by the end of the week with highs in the 80s. All right, thank you so much, Kyler. Well, ahead in sports, a special look back on an important day in the Arizona Wildcat history. Yeah, we're closing out on the 25th anniversary of the national championship for Arizona basketball. Look back at what makes this team absolutely Arizona. You're watching Kega 9 on your side. Now, Kega 9 on your side sports, sponsored by Casino Del Sol. Well, Thursday marks the 25th anniversary of Arizona basketball winning the national championship. And we take a look back at that improbable run in the March of 1997 with two men who literally had front row seats that would become an absolutely Arizona team. We were not uh, prepared for this at all. Dave Silver was the longtime sports director at KGA 9 and covered Arizona's run to a national title in 1997, a run few expected. They had a lot of young guys on that team, a lot of freshmen, a lot of people we just weren't sure about. So, you know, as that season unfolded, it was like, wow, this is a pretty good team. They still didn't finish great. Remember, they lost their last two Pac-10 games. Um, but then they got hot, you know, it was just an unbelievable run to the end. Every Lute team had a chance. Ryan Hansen was on Lute Olson's staff for many years. In 1997, he was the video coordinator. That particular team was struggling down the stretch and, and didn't play its best basketball, but you felt like this group, if they could ever get it put together, was going to do something special. The Wildcats were only a four seed in what was then known as the Southeast Regional. Arizona disposed of South Alabama and College of Charleston before facing top-seeded Kansas, a Jayhawks team that was loaded. That Kansas team had, what, Jacques Vaughn, Rafe LaFrance, Paul Pierce, you know, all these guys that played in the NBA. Roy Williams was their coach. He was in tears when that game ended, and Arizona's walking away with the win. That's when many stood up and took notice of an Arizona team now on a roll. The Cats beat Providence in the regional final, and their confidence was sky high. We believe that Mike Bibby is going to hit a big three when he gets the ball, or Michael Dickerson's going to take it to the hole and get an and one when he gets the ball, and uh, it's just that confidence that we have. It's just we're finally coming together. I mean, the, their guards are getting confidence in us, and we're building confidence in the guards. In Indianapolis, Arizona took down another one seed in the national semifinal game. The Wildcats beat North Carolina by eight. The underdog role, I mean, that's great. No one, no one gives us a chance to to win or you know come close in these games, and and we're just coming out and and uh, believing in ourselves and playing and playing. Uh, good Arizona basketball. Up next, the national championship game against yet another number one seed, Kentucky. It was a very long day waiting for the late Monday night tip-off. Dave Silver caught up with Lute Olson that afternoon in the team hotel. Everyone talks you know, about the psychological edge maybe you have. You're not the favorite. Is, is, can we throw that away now yeah. that the game is here? I think they know being uh, who we've